Hello everyone and welcome to Blender Savage. So today we'll go over a UV unwrapping and mapping. Here I have a Google image search result to show you guys what a UV mapping and wrapping is. So here's our UV map. See? So you, if I say for instance you have a UV sphere, you can uh, unwrap it. You get something like this. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a map of the globe and it looks so weird. You see like these different annotations in there. Well you can take that and uh, UV map it to these squares there. See, so each individual face here is a face here. Little triangular faces up there. And then you can uh, select the face here and adjust it to one of those faces there. And you can get something like that. Also, here's a box that's been unwrapped. You put a cube on it and then wrap the box around it. This is uh, heavily used in the industry. Here we have a face. I know it looks scary, but see, they can uh, flatten down a face. So what you would do, you get an object, you flatten it down, and then you wrap it on, onto mesh. Uh, but today we're working uh, UV map a cereal box. So we'll do something like this. I don't know if anybody's ever taken apart a box and flattened it out, a cereal box. But it should look something like this, right? So that's what we'll do for today. All right. So here I have a mesh cube. I am here in Blender. I'm going to go over here to the workspaces. Here's the workspaces. I'm going to select UV editing. Cool. So now I got two windows here. So I can always go back to layout, but I'm working UV editing. So UV editing gives me this workspace has been optimized for uh, UV wrapping, UV mapping, UV editing. This window here is just like my 3D view pool right here. It's actually the same window, except it just uh, squished over to the side. And this one over here is a different editor type. This is the, uh, let's see, what's it, what's it called? The UV editor. There we go. Well, it says right there UV editor editing, right? All right. Uh, so it takes your cube here, takes it into edit mode. Same cube we have over here. UV editing just took it over here into edit mode. So I'm going to change the size of my cube here into the size that um, looks proportional to a cereal box. So I'm going to scale it along the, uh, the Z axis, S, Z, 1.5 enter. There we go, S, Z, 1.5 enter. So I made it a 50% taller. And in the meantime, I guess I can show you guys this. If I select uh, this face up here, see how lights the face there. That's the top face right there in the UV map. So here's a UV wrap, uh, the unwrapped mesh. Here's a UV map of that. All right, now I'm going to narrow this along the y-axis to 30% of the original uh, width here. It's going to be S, Y, 0.3, enter. There we go. Just made it thinner. Cool. That looks something like a cereal box, right? There we go. All right. So I'm going to unwrap it. Uh, I don't like the shapes here. These are too square. Obviously, these are not all square. These are rectangular now. So I'm going to hit the U key. Remember to be aware of where your mouse is at. So I still have my mouse here inside the 3D viewport window. So when using the shortcuts, always be aware of where your mouse is at. Because if my mouse is over here and I hit a certain shortcut, a hotkey, it's going to affect this window over here instead of this window. So I want to have it here. I'm doing something here in this window. So U brings up the unwrap menu there. And I want to go with that smart UV uh, project. Unwrap is just this regular unwrap that we have here. I want to go with smart UV project and it'll uh, unwrap it. Um, to how I have it here. It'll try to guess the way I want it. Smart UV project. There you go. I'm going to leave those parameters there alone. I'm going to hit OK. Cool. Let's see. There we go. So now those, those squares there, those rectangles, match the shape that we have over here. OK. So now I want to bring over an image. Uh, first, I have to go find an image. So I'm going to go over to Google. I have one over here already. If you are looking for a UV map, just insert the word UV map into whatever you're looking for. See, it says UV mapping. Uh, UV map, cereal box. Oh. See, there's some you want. Something that looks like this, but not this one. Because it's, it's going to get these squares in here. We don't want those squares in our image. Uh, you don't want this one either. See, it has uh, these watermarks there. You don't want that. You're going to have that in your image. Uh, if you do select an image, you can scroll down in here. You can get some uh, some better ones. There's uh let's see, that one looks good. That one looks really good, actually. You may have a recipe in the back. Man, that looks delicious. No idea what it is, but I'm hungry all the time. Oh, crisp picks. I don't know if anybody likes those. I like them. I know it's got a lot of haters. So once you find an image you like, you're going to go ahead and uh, make sure to select this. It has a black frame around it. I'm going to go with this one here. Uh, then you right-click it. I'm using Google Image Search. Uh, uh, using Also using a Google Chrome browser. Right click in the save image as. 
and then you can choose where to save it. I'm going to save it in the desktop for convenience. That way I have to go searching for the downloads folder. I'm just going to just save it on desktop here. All right, give the image a name. Make sure your image is a, is a PNG or a JPEG file. JPEG or PNG. All right, I'm going to call this one Kellogg's. Am I spelling Kellogg's rock? Let me see there. Yes, all right. Kellogg's Cornflakes. Uh, UV map. There we go. Uh, naming is not too important, but you do want to give your files uh, descriptive names, right? So that's a UV map right there of a uh, LS Cornflex. It's been unwrapped. All right. So I'm going to hit save. Cool. And it tells me there's a JPEG, so it, it will be compatible with Blender. So make sure you have a JPEG. It will be JPG or JPEG or PNG. PNG also works. I'm going back over to Blender. I'm going to go over here to my UV editing window. I'm going to go to open up here in the top center of the UV editing window. window. I got an open right there. If you can't find open, let's say your window is really small, you want to hover your mouse up here and without clicking anything, just spin the wheel. And it'll uh, pull these other tools in and out. Same thing on this side too. If you're looking for a tool and you can't find it, spin the wheel and it should appear there. All right, so I'm going to go over here to open, click on open. And there's desktop right there. And that image should be here somewhere. There it is. Kellogg's Cornflakes UV map. Double click open. Cool, brought it in here. Let me spin the wheel so I can zoom out. Make sure mouse is here. There we go. All right, so I brought in my image and here's the faces there. And I just need to rearrange these later so they uh, occupy the, the proper space. All right, and then over here in the uh, 3D viewport window, I wanna apply the proper material, the material for the map here. So I'm gonna go over here and click on materials, properties panel. Just like over here in layout, there's properties panel right there. All right, materials. It's the red icon there, the red marble. And then instead of selecting a color, right here, base color, go to the far right. There's a little circle there, a little ribbon. You know, click on a little small ribbon there, left click it. There we go, you got a pop up menu. And select image texture, image texture. Cool. All right, we already brought this image into Blender. So I don't have to go to open and search for it again. Uh, Blender has a memory right here. So I can click right there on that image icon. And it remembers that I brought it in right there. So I can click on that one. Cool. Oh, all right. And that's applied there, but I can't see it right now because I'm in the uh, solid viewport shader. So if I want to go over to render to look dev so I can see, I got to spin the wheel up here. There we go. I can select any of these two options here, look dev. It'll let me see what's there. There it is. Or rendered. You can also hit the Z key to bring up the viewport shaders. There's rendered right there. Uh, look dev is right there. Solid is right there. And then the wireframe is right there as well. Uh, let's go with rendered for now. Uh, render will give you a preview of the final product. Cool. There we go. I got, I got it visible there. We got to adjust these faces. All right. So right now, vertex selection activated here. I want to go over to face selection. So I'm going to go back over here, spin the wheel. There we go. This is face selection. Not this one. Watch out for that. It's just a face menu. It's a menu that you, uh, of options you can do with faces. A menu of options you can do with edges. Here's a UV menu again. If you hit the U key. All right. There's vertex menu. But I don't want to use those menus. I just want to activate face selection. There we go. So if I click on a face, it'll select the face. As you can see here, as I click on the faces, it's highlighting the faces over here inside my uh, UV editing window. Let me spin the wheel so you can zoom in and out. See? All right. So see, there's a side panel there. I just I would have to move that one to the side. Here's my front face. All right. So now what I'm doing over here, just left click the front face there of my uh, mesh. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to move this over so that one of these corners which is one of the corners here in my, um, my my box cover art here. So what I want to do is select all of these little edges here and all these vertices. So I'm just going to hit the A key, A for Apple. Boom, that selects all. So A over here selects all, and A over there selects all. If I hit A here, it's going to select the whole mesh. And I don't want the whole mesh. I just want this one face, that one. So always be aware of where your mouse is at. So I want to hit A over here, and it selects just that. All right, so I want to move this. Um, so the shortcut for, for grab to move something is G, G for grab. Hit the G key. I move your mouse. I haven't clicked yet. I'm just moving my mouse. And I'm going to try to position one of these vertex, one of these little vertices here, on one of the edges. So I'm going to go with this lower left-hand corner here. There we go. So I position that one there. Uh, it's upside down. So I just got to flip this over. Um, the entire thing is selected. And to flip that over, that's uh, for rotate. That's R. I'm in R. I want to rotate 180 degrees. So after I hit R, I'm going to hit 180. Enter. There we go. 180 degrees. Cool, so now I flipped it uh, in the proper way. But as you can see here, it cuts off right in the eye right there. I don't get the uh, the top of the, the rooster here or the Kellogg's logo. 
I need to get that too. So I'm going to drag select this top part here. And notice I've not clicked on anything else here. I'm going to drag select over here. I still have that one front face there selected. All right. Hold on the left mouse button and drag across the top. There we go. So I have those two there selected. See, notice that's not glowing, only that. I'm going to G for grab. I'm going to pull it up. And you need to have a steady hand to do this. If not, no problem. Hit the Y key. It snaps it to the to the Y axis there. And if you're wondering why is it, why is it the Y axis, not the Z key, that's because you're looking at this from the top down. So you're looking at it from the Z axis. So the Y is forward back. X is left and right. All right. So now to tuck in the part on the right here. So I'm going to drag select the part here on the right there. There we go. And then G, X, move to the left. And the left click. And you get a good spot there, or whatever you consider is a good corner. There we go. I'm going to go with that. Left click there. Cool. You want to make this one wider here on the left. The X. There we go. So you want to approximately get the front face there, and it'll put it over there. See, there we go. Let me just click away from it. Cool. I could see it there. All right. And now I'm going to go over here with the right side here on the side panel. So I'm going to left click that right there. There we go. That's it over here. I just left click the side panel after I adjusted the front face. And I'm going to go back over here, hit the A key to select all with my mouse over here. And I didn't click over here, I just moved it over here. A to select all. G for grab. And just adjust one of the vertices around the corner. And I'm going to go right here. And left click there. Notice I didn't go all the way down here. That's the flap that folds in inside of the box. You can't even see that. You'd have to uh, take uh, take, up, take, the, uh, take the box apart. So um, I'm not going to go that far down. Because the consumers don't see that unless they break down the box. All right. So I got that there. Got those corners there. Cool. So I need to get the rest of the top there. Cherry wings. So that's what that recipe is there, cherry wings. All right. Hold down left mouse button and drag across. Cool. G, Y, and pull up to what I think is a, it's a top right there. And that looks about right to me. Right before that little square circle. Left click there. Cool. May want to pull this one down some more. G, Y, drag down. Cool. All right. So it looks like the bottom of flakes here gets cut off a little too soon. So I'm going to pull that over as well. Drag across there. Hold on the left mouse button and drag across. There we go. G, X, move it over. Cool. Left click. There we go. So I got that there. All right. Now I got to make the, uh, the top of the box here. So I'm going to click on the top lid there, the top flap. And I need to rotate this somewhere on there. I'm going to hit A to select all. I need to rotate it 90 degrees. So R, 90, enter. There we go. G for grab, and I'm going to put that one over here. See, that's the flap that's on top, and left click there. So depending on what image you brought in, uh, it might be a different flap that's on top. All right? the, the top flap might be on this side or that side, so you want to go the one with the uh, flap that sticks out. That'd be the top flap there. All right, so I got that corner position there. I need to pull these out all the way over. Hold on, left mouse button there. All right, then G, X, pull that over to the right. To the edge, bam. And I'm going to select these here, drag across, G, Y, and pull down there to the flap. Cool. And then that wide area is going to be the, the other area here on the, that end of the box right there. A different shade of white, but it's okay. It works. Uh, another option you could do, we can subdivide this face here or cut an edge through there. And then you can sample um, different sections for that white area. So you can get some red in there or some of this other white there. But in this case, that, that looks fine to me. That looks acceptable. Uh, as you can see here, this flap comes over from the back. And right there, it is coming over from the back. Cool. All right, so got the top, front, and side there. Let me get the other side here, the back of it. To rotate my reel around it, I'm just holding down the middle mouse button as I move the mouse, the spinner. So instead of spinning, you can push it down and move around. Or you can just hit the number six. See? And it rotates six on the number pad. Make sure number lock is on. Six or four. And it'll rotate around. You can just hold it as well. Hopefully nobody gets dizzy. I don't want any motion sickness. All right, there we go. So I'm going to select this one here. This is the back cover art. A to select all. G for grab. And position one of the corners there with one of the corners on the back cover art. Remember, avoid the flaps. There we go. Looks cool. Looks good, Looks good to me. Cool. I got to flip this one over too. So R, 180, enter. There we go. And then select the top part here. Drag across. G. Y, and we're going up. There we go. Left click. And I need to tuck this in right here. This is part of the flap, too. It gets tucked in. All right, so I just drag select that right in there. G, 
X, pull that inward, left click right there. Cool. All right. So everything lines up here on that face. Let's keep going here. Select this face there. Cool. Now I got to adjust this one onto the uh, other flap there. A to select all. G for grab. Move it over. Position one of the vertex there on the corner. And looks like it goes all the way down right there. I don't like that, uh, that little yellow bar with the text down there. So I'm going to go up here with the yellow. And left click there. Boom. There we go. And I'm going to select the top out here. Drag select across the top. Hold down the left mouse button. Drag across. And then G, Y, move the mouse up. Right before I roll plus sign. And left click right there. Oh, look, it's upside down. So i got to flip this over. A to select all. R for rotate. 180, enter. There we go. Ham what? Ham Luau. All right, with cornflakes. All right, drag select that. I can pull this out some more here too. G, X. Pull that out maybe like right there. And we click out of there, see how it looks. That looks good. I like the look of that. All right. And if you wonder how I'm doing this, I'm holding down the shift key. Actually, you just hold down the middle mouse button, the spinner, hold it down instead of spinning it. And you can drag across and change your view. All right, so the bottom part, you don't have to do the bottom if nobody's going to see it, but we're going to do the bottom anyway. So I'm going to select the bottom here, the bottom flap. There it is right there. A to select all. I got to rotate, so, rotate this uh, 90 degrees. R, 9, 0, enter. And I can use this one here, this flap or that flap. I'm going to go with this one. It looks a little cleaner. This one has that cut right there. So I'm going to go with this one here. G for grab. It has a big Kellogg's logo there. And position one of the vertices there on the corner. There it is. Zoom in. All right. I'm going to drag across there. Drag select there. G, X, pull over to the right. And there we go. Drag select the bottom there. G, Y, pull up, left click there, cool, let me click out of there, there we go, see you can get some of this, uh, some little features in there too, see there they are, uh, got a little bit of white in there, went too far, cool, alright, so I'm going to go back over to layout, the default view over here, the layout workspace, uh, there it is, I can't see here because of my viewport shader, so it's a solid viewport shader, so I have to go over either to look dev or rendered, so I'm going to select rendered there, Remember, you hit the Z key, and you also get the viewport shading menu, which is the same menu that's up there. There's rendered, solid, look dev, and the wireframe. So I'm going to go with the render there. Now I'm going to create some duplicates here. I'm going to make a duplicate, move it out to the side so it look like uh, cornflakes boxes stacked on the shelf. I'm going to hit Shift D to create a duplicate. There we go. I haven't clicked yet. I just hit Shift D. I want to snap the, um, the duplicate here to the X axis. So I'm at the X key. There you go, move it over, and I can have them touching or just real close to each other. So I'll give them a small gap in there, and left click there. I'll create another one and put it on the left side. Shift D, X, move the mouse, and then left click, just eyeball it there, left click there. Cool. I want to put some behind it. Hold on the Shift key, left click that one, left click that one. Cool. Once I selected them, now I'm going to, with both of those three selected there, sorry, all three selected there, I'm going to duplicate them. And I'll reposition them along the Y axis, which is the green line there. Shift E, Y, pull back, and get them real close. Left click there. Shift E, Y, pull the mouse back. Uh, left click there. Maybe some more. Shift E, Y, pull the mouse back. And left click. Uh, maybe a little more G, Y. And then there we go. Cool. One more. Shift E, Y, pull the mouse back. Uh, left click right there. Cool. All right, there we go. Uh, let's see. Here's my light source. It's not really lighting up the front of it. If you notice here, my light source is behind the, the front of the boxes. So I'm going to left click it. I move it this way. So I'm moving along the Y axis. So I'm in G for grab. Then the Y key. And move it here to the left. And that looks good right there. Left click. Cool. It lights them up. Uh, you can change the type of lamp that you have, the type of light. You can also change the strength on it. So long as your light is selected, you'll get lamp data over here. See, there's a light bulb icon. So left click it there to activate it. There we go. Here's the uh, the light menu. Uh, right now it's a point light. A point light has properties similar to light coming off from a candle or a light bulb. 
A sun, this property is like the sun, see super bright. A spotlight is similar to a spotlight like that you see like in a stand-up uh, improv show or uh, the Batman spotlight. Uh, I'm going to go with the area right here, area. So go with the area, see area, lights it up nice and neat. So area lamp has properties similar to light coming off a TV screen, a cell phone screen, or a monitor. So it's like a contained uh, light. I like the look of it here, like uh, it makes the lights pop up and I don't have to play around with these settings here. Because if I go over here to sun, I have to decrease the strength so it's not so bright. Uh, let's see. Uh, decrease, the decrease the strength by a lot if you have the sun. I'm going to go with the area. Area light. Uh, reset to default value. What happened there? So undo that. Go back to my area light, how I add it. There we go. So area light was at 1,000 watts. All right. All right, so I'm at zero for camera view. See what the camera sees. Cool. I like what the camera sees there. Uh, if you don't like what the camera sees, you can change the um, how your camera is positioned. I uh, hit zero for on the number pad for camera view. Remember, I have a number lock activated. And to select the camera, I just have to click on this dotted line right here. That's the uh, that border there. That's the frame of the camera. So you can left click it. If it turns uh, this white color or yellow, it lets me know that I have the camera selected. Also, over here in the outline, you can just click on camera there. And if the text is yellow, then you know the camera is selected. And now I have camera data menu here. For focal length, you can um, change the focal length, change the focus of the uh, of the lens. You can like do like a zoom or zoom out. I'm gonna leave it as is. Uh, for shift X, you could do um, a truck, which is like uh, moves left or right. It's actually not a pan. That's a, that's a truck. So you're trucking, you're sliding left or right. That's a truck. And then a Y, you can do a tilt. So you can hold on the left mouse button and you can drag there. And you either move, uh, you're tilting the camera up or down, you're rotating it. That's not a pan either. A pan is where um, it kind of scans in a circular motion along the, uh, like a Z axis. All right, so I like that view there. Now I'm going to render this out. And that's just F12 on your keyboard. F12. There we go. I'm going to wait for this other one to pop up. There it is. Let me spin a little zoom out. And so I can have an image of this here. I'm going to go up here to image. And then save as. And I can save it somewhere, give it a name there, and then I can turn that in. Uh, another uh, form to uh, to render out. You can go up here to render left hand corner and select render image. Not render animation. We we're not animating anything. If you select render animation, you're going to get uh, 250 pictures. We just want that one file there, that one PNG file, render image, and you get that same window here. And you go to image and save as, and you can save your file. Uh, so that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. Any questions, you can always ask in the comments. Have an awesome day.